fixing the gas tank today. This is off of a Honda. Um, it's upside down right now. But the way they did it from the factory is they actually uh, glued and spot welded this plate to the bottom. And then it bolts to the engine. And over the years, just the fatigue of running, what it's done is where the spot welds were, is it actually created some stress cracks. Um, you can see them here, 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 here. I made them a little bit worse by actually pulling off the uh, the bottom because the spot welds were still actually attached. But they spot welded and glued. So I've cleaned them up a little bit. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques, talk about it. A couple di different techniques of actually sealing a gas tank when you have a hole, a metal gas tank. Now, before I get started on this metal gas tank, I'll let you know that I do have a video on plastic gas tanks. So if you have a vehicle with a, a uh, plastic gas tank, I do have a great video on how to repair that. And I did a repair years and years ago and it's still holding up just fine. So this technique for metal gas tanks, I've done this on automotive and currently have one that is about 14 years ago is when I did it, the same technique. And I've done it on a lot of small engines, stuff like that. So holds up great, seems to work really nice. But the easiest way to do it, I'll just skip right to the chase, is JB Weld. That's what the easiest thing to do. Works great, but over the years I've learned a couple other techniques work just make this a little bit easier. Though JB Weld is an awesome method, I don't use it as much as I used to anymore. And one of the reasons why is just standard JB Weld takes about 24 hours to dry. Usually I don't want to wait that long. But it actually is um, pretty runny. It's um, like a toothpaste consistency once you mix it up. But as soon as, if you let it sit, and people have used it a lot, know that it runs off. So if I filled up a big hole like this, it would actually, chances are, it would actually fall all the way through and there'd still be a pinhole in the morning and you'd have to reapply. And the second coat would be good. Or I could put it in there and I could use something like a screw head and actually put a screw in there to take up some of the space and help me out. So it does work. It is a good go-to. Now I prefer um, thicker epoxies, quicker set epoxies. I don't think they're quite as strong, but they work just as well. And one of my one's biggest go-tos is a uh, quick steel. And this is just something you can get on Amazon or uh, even Walmart usually sells this stuff. And this is all gone. I do have some Loctite, which is pretty comparable. Loctite sent me a bunch of stuff to try out. So I've been using a lot of Loctite stuff lately, and I love it. But it's uh, the quick steel looks just like this. You have a black and a gray and you cut off a piece and just mix it in your fingers and you apply that. And this is usually what I'll use because usually this has about a 10 minute setup time. And so that's what I want, quick. Um, other techniques Let's are right actually uh, Bondo Automotive Filler. Um, but if you don't need it, usually you spend a little bit more than you should because I think a little can like this costs about 10 bucks or something, which is an expensive or eight bucks. You know, just to, if you're just filling the gas tank. If you have it around, use it. I, I've played around with it. Um, I've done some tests on it where I've let it harden and I've actually let it sit in gas and it gets a little bit soft, just a teeny teeny bit, but it never seems to ever break down in gasoline, so seems to work pretty good. I've read online that people use it a lot. I've actually never really tried it um, in real world situations just because the technique I use works so well, but people claim this works really good. Um, another thing people do a lot is fiberglass. You can do fiberglass resin over them. Or if you have a tank that's actually rusty, and this tank isn't rusty, is you can actually use a, a tank sealer. And that's where you would probably put, you would put a piece of tape over these, um, or even a screw or something in there, then a piece of tape to help give it stuff. And you actually pour a tank sealer in, swish it around, let it dry, let it set up. There's a couple different techniques to it. But that's great for if you have a really rusty tank inside where you want all the rust to be sealed. And generally if you have one rust hole right here, you can't see a rust hole over here, but it's, you know, paper thin and it's ready to pop through as well. So if you seal one, the next is going to pop through. But talk about a little bit about cleanup. Um, if you do have, let's say, like a crack or something like that, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but you want to open that thing up. And that's what I've done here is I've actually wedged it open because you want the epoxy to go fall inside and outside and give it something to bite to. If it's closed up almost nothing it won't have enough bite onto it. One of the second things is, is to scratch. You know, you don't want to be using a wire, like a wire brush in your drill or something where you're creating sparks, but you know, scratching with a screwdriver is never gonna make a spark. So scratch up the surface really good, clean it up with brake cleaner, acetone, 
um, other stuff like that to help remove any oil, any grease. But the more scratches, the better. And I got those opened up nice and wide where they're going to grab that stuff really well. So let's get this stuff in here. Let's start mixing and using it. And you just slice off a chunk. If you want this stuff to last, um, one of the tricks is usually it comes in these tubes is actually put the side you cut down and if you can get it to sit down in the bottom or set it there or push it down in so it seals up against the bottom and then it won't dry out anymore. But um, let's take this. My hands are actually a little dirty. Let's wipe off my hands because anything on your hands, grease, oil, will just get incorporated right into this stuff. And we'll just take this and mix it up nice. Just take a second until it's a uniform color. Just gonna rip off chunks, and the hotter this is, actually the faster this stuff sets up. But I'm just gonna start pushing it inside, and I don't care if it falls inside, that's okay. But I wanna apply, I want it to go down in those little cracks. And I want it to be wide. The wider the better. If it's just peeling right off, make sure your, your surface is clean. And this stuff gives you a couple minutes to work with, so you don't have to be rushed too much. But we'll lay this in these. These are some pretty big holes. Yeah, I got this uh, generator from a, uh, a neighbor. Gave it to me for free. Said it had a hole in the tank. And I've never seen this happen. I kept thinking it was this thing because it was leaking out and around this. And because this is the lowest part, it kept dripping down this thing. So I kept resealing this. Took that apart, put a new row ring in there a couple times. Kept playing around with that. And finally, I'm like, maybe, because he just kind of mentioned that there's a hole in the tank or something like that. So I'm like, maybe there really is a hole in the tank. So... Sure enough, pulled the tank off and it is it was weeping out under that whole thing and falling down there. Now I do have to, and this is something you won't have to do, is I do have to reattach the bottom to this. And it was originally spot welded and glued, mainly spot welding the glue just kind of took out some vibration. And I'm actually going to use, instead of epoxy, because that's a lot of epoxy, epoxy isn't the cheapest stuff and I have a lot of Bondo left over, is I'm going to use Bondo. Bondo ha bonds to metal very well, so I'm actually going to layer a good goo of Bondo in there, smush this down, have Bondo come up all these holes, and actually use that to uh, attach this plate so I can reattach this to the engine. Still have a ton of Bondo left over from when I did my boat, but I'm just using this to glue. But this stuff, um, people swear by it um, as for a great tank sealer, and I, I don't see why not because, like I said, it. Uh, Seems to be gas resistant, doesn't seem to be bothered by it at all. Smash it in there and it'll glue the tank back to the mount. Well, she's had a full tank for a while now, not a single leak. Um, I put gas in it 20, 25 minutes right after, you know, from when I originally put the, uh, the stuff on, even before the Bondo even set up, I had gas in it. but. It's not leaking whatsoever. Again, if you have a plastic gas tank that's leaking, I do have a video on that, and I'll put a link to that right after here. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and thumbs up. Helps me out. Thanks, guys. Let's see if this uh, old flathead Honda will start. So